the database activity within Moodle. The term database sounds a bit scary. People think of like uh, Microsoft Access and the complexities of setting things up. It's not actually that complicated. It's a relatively simple activity once you work out how it works. And I'll go through the steps for doing that. So what I'm going to do is in Moodle, I'm going to add an activity or resource and I'm going to add a database activity. Now, my example here, I'm going to create an activity where the students have to research different European countries and then they've got to find certain information and then share that, which the rest of the group can see. So my title, my activity is going to be called European countries. Now, in the description, I would, I would explain what they have to do. Uh, I'm going to skip that for the moment and just put So I'm just going to put a very simple bit of text there. You would put more information usually. I want to go to entries. Approval required. Well, if it's set to no, then it means that when they add something, the other learners will see it straight away. If I change it to yes, then it means that the teacher would have to approve it before it's visible. So you're going to use one of the other options. We can allow comments. Well, I'm going to turn comments on so that once somebody's done an entry, other learners can comment on it. Entries required before viewing. So you can set it so that the learner has to put their entry in before they can see other learners. So you either specify the number that they have to do, e.g. one, or you can leave it as a none. And you can also specify the maximum number of entries. So if you only want one each, if you only want each learner to submit one, well set it to one. If you want them to have the ability to add multiple entries, then you can leave it as none. So that means there isn't a limit on the maximum number of entries. Your availability is basically specifying the dates when they can both add the entries and then view them. I'm going to leave them all unticked so that it's available all of the time. You can actually have a ratings option so students can rate each other's entries like using a five point scale, in which case you can then say, well, I either want the maximum rating or the average rating is what we're going to record. Um, but you don't have to use ratings. I'll leave it off for the moment. And you've got the usual common module settings, um, as you will have with other activities. Now, in terms of activity completion, you can specify different options. I'm just going to go for count of entries is one. So they have to add one entry in order for this to be marked as complete. So I'm going to save and display. All we've done at the moment is, is add the basic settings for the particular uh, activity. Now, the way that the database works is we have to specify the different fields that we want the learners to input. So when you get to the screen, it will automatically take you to the fields tab. If not, you have to go to the fields tab yourself. And we're going to create a new field. Now, if you go to this drop down list, it will give you the options of the different types of field that we want. So the first field that I'm going to use is the name of the country. So students are going to type in the name of the country that they're researching. So this is a text input. So that's like a single line of text. So I'm just going to call it name. It's going to be a required field. So I'm going to tick that so they have to enter it. And if you're using auto linking, if you tick that, it means that everywhere else within the course that the name of that country appears, it would actually make an automatic link to it. I'm going to leave that turned off for the moment. And I'm going to add. I'm then going to repeat the process with um, the population of the country, and this will be a number. So all I'm going to do is add that. Now this one I'm not going to set as required in case they can't find the information. I'm going to ask what the capital city is. Again, this will be a text input. I'm going to ask which side of the road they drive on. So for this, I'm going to do a radio button. And the options will be either left or right. So I actually put the options in. And then finally, I'm going to have my last box. It's going to be a text area. This is like a bigger text box than the text input. And this is going to be called. So this is where the students would type a bit more information about it. Now, you can change the width and the height. It just changes how big the box is. I'm going to leave it as 60 and I'm going to change the height to 15. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. It's a bit of trial and error. But if you've got multiple text boxes and you want some ones to be bigger than others, you can use this to differentiate uh, the boxes.
So what we've done now is we've set up the fields. Having set up the fields, we have to now set up what are called the templates. So I go to the templates tab and the four main ones that we want are the list, single, the search and the add template. In fact, the three main ones are list, simple and add. I'm going to start with the add template. So I'm going to go to the add template tab. And this is basically how will uh, the screen look that the students submit the information into. Now, if you get more comp uh, competent at this, you can really spend a lot of time improving the layout and changing the layout and putting extra information and all sorts of stuff. For the moment, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the items in the left hand column into bold. This is going to appear as bold and then the bits on the right is where the students will enter the information. Now I don't actually want to use the tags facility so I'm just going to delete that row so it takes out the bit that's automatically put tags in. And I'm going to save template. What I'm going to now do is I'm just going to test how it looks by actually adding an entry. So I'm going to go to add entry and this is how it's going to look. So you've got the name the population, the capital city, which side they drive on, and then the main features. So this is how the, this is what the students are going to see. So I'm going to just quickly put in some information. Um, so I'm just putting in a bit of information, and I'm going to save and view. So what I've done is I've added an entry and now what I'm doing is I'm viewing how it will look to other users when they view it. So that's how it's looking as view single. I think I can tidy that up as well. So I'm just going to go to templates. Single template is what we're referring to. I'm going to again just make those items bold on the left hand side. I'm going to just delete the tags row that I don't need. And I'm going to save the template. So now when I view single, you'll see it's put the things in bold. Now I'm going to add an extra item into this one because I want to know which student has actually put this entry in. So I'm going to go back to templates. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a row above. And, and then all I'm going to do is I need to add in the placeholder for the student's name. Now on the left hand side you can see the available placeholders and you've got user picture user. So I'm going to put the user picture in first and then I'm going to do a space and then I'm going to do user. I'm going to save template and now when I view single you'll see here that it's put the name of the, the picture of myself and my name as the author of this particular entry. I'm just going to jump back I'm just going to merge those two cells across together so that it looks like that. Save template and view single. Now it's right aligned it, so I'm just going to change it so it left aligns it. So it's just a case of fiddling around until it does what we want it to do. So if I do that, this may not work, I'm just going to see if it does. Okay, yeah, it has worked. So let's put my name there, then let's put the information in, and it's put the answers that I've put in. Now, if I go to the view list, this is where we will see all of the items. And at the moment, it's got the default template, which isn't very attractive. So again, I'm going to go back to templates. I'm going to go to the list template, and this is what it's showing. So basically, for every entry that there is, it's going to show this here. Now, I don't actually want to show all of the details. All I want to show is the name of the country. And then when they expand it, um, they get to see the full information. So I'm actually going to delete all of the rows apart from the name of the country, because we don't need those. And we'll just see how that looks as a start. So when I view the list, it's got United Kingdom, and then underneath there is the, the more icon, which will allow you to see more. But I actually want that to appear to the right of the country. So I'm going to go back to templates. So rather than these items at the bottom, rather than them appearing in a separate row underneath, I'm just going to cut them and I'm going to paste them to the right. And then I can delete the row of table below. 
And again, I'm just going to make the word name bold and save template. So now you've got name, United Kingdom, and when I click on the magnifying glass, it will then take me to the more information about the United Kingdom. If I quickly add another entry for France, and I won't fill in all the details, but if I just do that, you'll now see you've got United Kingdom appearing there and France appearing there. From a learner's perspective, they wouldn't see these boxes, so it would align a bit more easily. It's only I as the tutor get to see them so that I can sort of bulk delete if I want to. Uh, from the student's perspective, the student that creates the entry will get the cog where they can edit their own entry. They'll get the trash can to delete their own entry, but they won't see those for other people's entries that only see them on their own. I, as the teacher, will see them um, for all of the entries so that I can edit or delete if I need to. You have got the search template if you want to change the way that the search screen looks so you can get different options. I won't touch on that in this video. It's a little bit more complicated. Um, but what I've done is I've given you some basic information as to how we can create a very simple activity using the database activity. As you become more competent and confident with it, we can start to really manipulate the way that the different templates look to make uh, the results much more striking. Uh, you don't have to use a table layout that you've got there. You can have all sorts of different layouts uh, and it can become a very powerful tool. I'm Dave Ford. If you wish to get in touch, then please look at my contact details on the screen. I'm based in the UK, but I work with organisations all over the globe, providing consultancy, training and resource development services, mainly in the areas of Moodle and Tatara.